Uh, thanks very much, Chrissy. And thanks as well to Vertical Events for the opportunity to present to you this afternoon. And uh, in particular, thanks to all of you who are here in this late afternoon session to hear a few brief remarks about Renascor's relatively recent discovery of a massive graphite ore body near the coast of South Australia. Uh, we call it the Sivir Graphite Project. Uh, Sivir is a relatively recent graphite discovery. We only delineated a resource at Sivir just over two years ago. At the time, we viewed Sivir as having the potential to become a competitive graphite mine in the context of other graphite developments in Australia. Uh, since that time, we've discovered there's significantly more to Sivir, more in terms of the scale of the resource, uh, and more importantly, the quality of product we can produce from Sivir. And after completing a pre-feasibility study earlier this year, more to the project economics that suggests we could produce at potentially one of the lowest operating costs of any graphite development globally. So two years on, I now think it's fair to think of Sivir as having the potential to be not only a competitive Australian graphite project, but one that could compete globally with any graphite development in the world. Uh, I'll be talking to you today about some of the unique characteristics of Sivir that we think make it uh, a globally significant graphite project, uh, one that has the real potential to become a tier one graphite mine here in Australia. Uh, with Sivir, it starts with the resource. Sivir is, uh, is a large resource, uh, over 80 million tons. It's one of the largest reserves in the world. Uh, it's a high grade near surface ore body. And uh, two years on, we've been able to replicate time and time again a high quality graphite product. Uh, and probably most importantly, having completed a pre-feasibility study earlier this year, we now believe we can produce that high quality, that high demand product at amongst the lowest cost of any graphite development in the world. Uh, we also think we have a bit of an advantage because we're in an area of South Australia that has access to existing infrastructure. We believe we can start up that at amongst the lowest startup capital cost of any graphite development globally. Uh, but what really makes Sivir unique and what sets it apart from other graphite projects is the fact that we have these compelling economic dynamics behind the project, but we're located in Australia. Uh, the graphite supply chain has traditionally been dominated by supply from China. The Chinese continue to produce somewhere between two-thirds and three-quarters of all graphite globally. Uh, but this isn't a con situation that can continue for a number of reasons. Uh, this has been known for some years now, and we've seen a number of new projects that emerge. Uh, and these projects have really been dominated by large-scale developments in East Africa. Uh, East Africa isn't without its own issues, in particular sovereign risk. Uh, so we think there's a place in the, in the graphite supply chain for a graphite producer from a low sovereign risk jurisdiction, from a place like Australia, provided you can do it at a low cost. And this is a niche we believe we can fill with the Sivir Graphite Project. A quick corporate overview. Renascor trades on the ASX under the ticker symbol RNU. I'll just call your attention to our cash position here. Uh, we had over six and a half million at the end of the last quarter. Uh, as most of us here know, it's been a difficult time in the equity markets. Uh, we think we're in a relatively good position because we will not have to go back to the market to look for more capital until we complete our definitive feasibility study and reach a decision to mine. In terms of the project itself, this is a picture of where the project sits, just outside of the township of Arno Bay on the Arab Peninsula. And about five to 10 meters below the surface here sits a very large graphite deposit, a massive graphite deposit. By our reckoning, it's the fifth largest graphite reserve in the world. Uh, but again, there's more to Sivir than just the size of the resource. It's a large resource, it's a high grade resource. Uh, and because of its unique flat lying orientation, we have what we believe to be one of the lowest operating costs of any graphite development globally. And again, because of our location in an area of established infrastructure, we believe we can start up at a significantly lower capital cost startup than other graphite developments. Uh, and in every case, we're producing what looks like a very high quality graphite product, one with a flav favorable flake size distribution that can easily upgrade to a high purity product that can service the spherical graphite market and other high growth sectors. And in terms of our location, you can see on the map here, we're located about halfway between Wyala and Port Lincoln, just off of the coast of the Air Peninsula. Uh, we think this is a fantastic location. We're in an area of a very supportive government, the South Australian government, one that's given mining, lease, mining licenses for graphite projects in the past, one that quite frankly desperately needs new projects. Uh, it's also an area of great established infrastructure. Uh, in fact, it's hard to think of a better location for a new development than where we sit on the Air Peninsula. 
In terms of the resource itself, uh, Sivir is one large deposit. It's one massive resource, really. Uh, it's not a situation of a number of smaller deposits that are put together. It's one massive ore body. Uh, and this has the obvious advantages from a cost perspective. Our operating cost will be low in the first year. We won't have subsequent pre-strips in later years when we move to other deposits. We'll stay low in year five, we'll stay low in year 15, low in year 30. It's a low cost operator. Another advantage we're seeing from operating from one massive ore body rather than a number of different ones uh, is in some of our discussions with customers. Uh, potential customers are telling us they want consistent supply. Uh, we think Sivir is also going to be advantageous because we'll be offering the supply always from the same source. Uh, in terms of Sivir's scale, again, Sivir is the largest resource in Australia, and this just sort of demonstrates where we sit in terms of scale, and it really underlines the fact that Sivir really needs to be thought of as a globally significant graphite resource. It's a new resource. Many people don't know about this resource. Uh, graphite's traded, graphite equities have traded at something of a discount since we made this discovery, but it's really quite significant, and it's really globally significant. Uh, our development plan from Sivir takes into account some of the difficulties we've seen from other more advanced graphite developers who got into this before we did. Uh, one of the difficulties with graphite as an industrial mineral, it's difficult to get binding offtake contracts that are bankable. Therefore, it's difficult to get project financing. We've seen other larger scale operations fail to reach uh, find the capital they, can, they, they need to get started. Uh, often this is because they're in difficult jurisdictions. We think we may be advantaged because we're in Australia. We think we have another advantage in our location in Australia. Again, we're in an area of established infrastructure. What this permits us to do is it permits us to start up for lower cost. We don't have to spend significant amounts of capital on things like road upgrades, on relocating populations, on water. It's already there. Uh, therefore, we can start at a relatively low rate. We're projecting the, uh, an option to start at a smaller scale, produce over 20,000 tons per year, but still produce profitably, producing at just over $575 a ton against a projected sales price of over 1,000 before we upgrade to a larger scale operation where we would be producing over 150,000 tons of graphite and we'd be able to unlock some of the half a billion dollars in net present value that our PFS suggests is within this project. Uh, metallurgically, we've adopted a conventional graphite flow sheet. It's a non-chemical, non-thermal flow sheet. Uh, it's very similar to the way graphite's processed, not only other graphite developments, but graphite mines globally. Uh, and we've been able to get a very favorable flake size distribution so we can sell a large portion of our material at premium prices. We're also easily able to upgrade our material to high purities. Uh, and we've been able to test this now multiple times over, uh, not only in batch work, but we've moved on to different labs in Australia, in Canada, in Europe. We recently completed lock cycle test work, saw some in improvements in recovery, uh, and we only recently re announced the results of a pilot plant program where we processed 20 tons of material at a Chinese production facility. And again, we've been able to replicate these results again and again and again. And so we think we're starting to de-risk this as we push forward through our DFS. We expect to get consistent results. And again, we're always doing that at a relatively low cost. We've also looked at going downstream, uh, seeing if our product can be upgraded into key industry segments, including spherical graphite. This is the kind of graphite we've heard about before. It goes into the anode component of lith lithium ion batteries. The industry spec is to get up to a 99.95 purity. We've been able to get our material up to 99.9 other, and otherwise meet the industry specifications for spherical graphite. And again, we're always doing this at a relatively low cost. We've similarly been able to test our material for expandable graphite. Expandable graphite is a key growth area in the graphite market. Uh, expandable graphite is used for flame retardants. We've tested our material not just in labs but in customers, and again, we've been able to hit the industry mark for this very important end market. Uh, and again, we're always doing this at a relatively low OPEX, and the reason we can do that uh, is primarily because of the deposit itself. The processing costs tend to remain constant, but the mining costs are quite low for Sivir. Uh, this is a typical cross-section from Sivir. What you see are relatively thick intersections of high-grade graphite near the surface. It's big and it's flat-lying. Our mining cost is low. If we compare Sivir to some other graphite deposits, so I've superimposed some other deposits in the region that are more typical graphite deposits, what you see is they're vertical, they're subvertical. but when we pull back to Sivir, what you see is we're flat-lying, that translates into a low mining cost. A low mining cost gives us a low operating cost. 
And if we compare Sevier to other graphite developments, not just in Australia, but in the world, we see that Sevier sits amongst the lowest quartile of cost of any graphite development globally. And again, we think this is a real advantage from Sevier. As with any minerals, commodities are going to go up, commodities are going to go down. Because we're a low cost operator, we'll be able to survive in any environment. Our mine to market solution is quite simple. Uh, we're located just seven kilometers from the Port Lincoln Highway. We plan to truck our material from our mine site at Arno Bay to the established port at Port Adelaide. Uh, it's a low cost solution. It's low cost because we don't really have to upgrade that much. And it's also low risk because everything's already there. So a very low cost, low risk mine to market solution. Uh, we recently entered into a relatively innovative agreement with uh, a large EPC contractor, Royal IHC, and their Australian subsidiary. Uh, and the reason for doing this is really to accelerate the development of Sevier, to get us past feasibility through construction into production as quickly as possible. And the reason this agreement does this is, is really threefold. First, we'll be working with an EPC contractor and an Australian engineering group on our definitive feasibility study, primarily doing engineering and metallurgical components. Once we complete that definitive feasibility study, the second component of this agreement is IHC will have the option to give us an EPC proposal. If they like what they see at the PFS level, we'll get an EPC proposal. We'll have the option to accept that, and then we'll work together on trying to get project financing. Uh, we also should be able to work with IHC at using their treasury network, and we think that's really going to give us a leg up on project financing. Uh, the other aspect of this that helps us is IHC has agreed to put a million of their own money into early project works, just demonstrating their faith behind this project. Uh, and again, the goal here is to accelerate Sevier's development, to get us through our definitive feasibility study into an EPC proposal and financing as quickly as possible. To put this in perspective, since the discovery in 2016, uh, we did a scoping study in 2017. This year we did the pre-feasibility study. By the first quarter of next year, we expect to complete our definitive feasibility study. If we can get a good EPC proposal behind that, we'll be able to turn that definitive feasibility study very quickly into a bankable feasibility study. We could be constructing a mine as early as 2019 and producing graphite as early as 2020. From an investor perspective, uh, again, we're a late entrant into what's been a very crowded space in graphite. Uh, graphite had its time in the sun five, six years ago, maybe. Uh, but since then, it's been going through fits and starts and probably more fits and starts. Uh, we trade at a discount to a number of our peers, as you can see from the image here. But we think there's a real possibility we're going to be able to climb the value curve and we're going to be able to climb it relatively quickly, uh, primarily because we're fully cashed up. We're cashed up through the completion of our definitive feasibility study. We expect to be quite busy as we complete this year and move into 2019 uh, on a number of fronts. Uh, first, offtake. Um, now that we have our pre-feasibility study completed, now that we have customer samples and we have a potential clear site to production, we're finally able to have discussions in earnest with offtake partners. And our goal with offtake partners is going to be similar to what we've done with our EPC contractor. We want to deal with parties who help us get over the edge, get us financed so we can get into development. Uh, we expect to be busy with project improvements as we push through our DFS technologically, metallurgically. Uh, we recently released the results of some of our infill drilling. They came out quite good. We expect to have more infill drill results coming out in the coming weeks. Uh, we also are looking into going downstream to producing not just a graphite concentrate, but producing a spherical graphite con product for sale directly to anode manufacturers who in turn supply battery manufacturers. We're working on a pre-feasibility study. We expect to complete that later this year. Uh, then finally, as we push through the beginning of next year, we expect to complete our definitive feasibility study and move on to project financing. In summary, Sevier is a, it's a new discovery, but it's a world-class discovery. Uh, and we think there's real reason to think we can translate this from the study stage to the operation stage. Uh, because the ore body itself, it's massive, it's high grade, it's near surface, uh, it has globally competitive project economics, low OPEX, low CAPEX. Uh, we're fully funded to decision to mine. Uh, and best of all, we're here in mine-friendly Australia. Um, I have a booth here. I'm here with our exploration director who's uh, primarily been responsible for undertaking the drill programs. He hasn't missed a step yet, so uh, he's here as well. We'd be happy to talk to you. Uh, come see us at the booth. Thanks very much.